Um, so Bracelet Day has been a long time in the process. Um, I first started chatting to O'Brien Press back in 2022 to kind of see how I can bring forward the story I really wanted to tell, which is the story in Braids Take a Day. So tell us the background of the story. So it's about a 17-year-old girl who lives in Ennis Diamond County, Clare. She's just finished her leave in search. She's excited for the summer. There's exciting things happening like the teenage disco. Her dad is also, yeah, her dad is also gone for three weeks, which, you know, a lot of freedom as a teenager to have. Yeah. So her and her best friend are trying to get into a bit of mischief, um, but Abby Demi would be quite reserved. So it's kind of like her best friend egging her on. And one of the key parts of the book also is that Abby Demi has never had anybody in her area to do her own hair so this is also the summer where she relearns how to kind of do her own hair especially braids and um, a lot of people notice that and want their own braids done by Abby Demi. Okay. Which is absolutely huge isn't it um, the hair the crowning glory and the difficulty and the time that's invested people yeah. don't realize it unless they go through it. Yeah so for example like this I just put in on Thursday night and it took me till 2 a.m. and I started at 6 p.m. So it's 7, it, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Oh, that's eight, 8 hours. 8 yeah. hours yeah. to yeah. do your, your hair. Yeah. So it, it, then it, the talk about suffering for beauty and my it, goodness it is. gracious. It's worth it because you get the glam but yeah. it is a time investment and that's one thing Abby Demi kind of teaches people around her. Um, she kind of explains to her best friend Sinead that you know some braids can be culturally sensitive and some hairstyles are for everybody so the book touches on those kind of themes as well but also it's about appreciating uh, the time and beauty and intricacies of black hair culture as well so there are elements in there where Abidemi just is like you know I'm 17 I don't really know too much about her I just enjoy the look of it and doing it and kind of um, the arch of it so it's also the parts of it that are educational but there are also parts that leaves it up to the reader to kind of think a bit more about mm -hmm. what is so important about her to a character like Abby Demi. OK. Yeah. What reaction have you got? Because the book's out now almost two weeks. Yeah, so it's been super positive, which I know uh, when I wrote the book, I was like, I hope it lands well. I hope there's a market for it. I hope people are interested in it because I've always been the kind of person where I write the stories I want to read. And that was my thing going forward. I want to read a book about hair and someone living in rural Ireland and kind of like um, that joy of being a teenager, which we see through Abby Demi experiences, because although hair is the, um, the web that kind of weaves the narrative together, there's other things about her teenage life, which is super exciting. Um, but the reaction has been incredibly positive positive a lot of people are coming back with saying that you know they've learned something new about hair or even how they're happy to see that representation for teenagehood in rural Ireland because um, I don't know if you know Ennis Diamond but um, yeah. there's a yeah. lot there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of teenagers there but maybe they're not seeing themselves in stories as well and for Abby Demi to be from a black background as well a Nigerian background um, I just wanted to write a story that also puts children growing up in rural Ireland at the centre and focus. But there's very much food for thought in this because of course there's so many accusations of culture cultural appropriation when it comes to different hairstyles. I remember um, Gwen Stefani years ago was accused of that in a video for appropriation Japanese culture. Um, if you have braids in your hair now, you said it depend on the type of braids. And it, some can be sensitive, some cannot. Yeah. And, kind of, and for a lot of people, myself included, I'm almost afraid to ask or say because I don't know what's offensive and what's not. So there is a kind of an ease into that really, Yeah, there? so there's actually a chapter that deals with that where Sinead says, you know, I want the, um, the specific particular celebrities braids. And Abby Demi's like, you know, I don't really feel comfortable doing that because now that I'm learning more about hair, I kind of know the historical relevance of it. Yeah. And she also says, I actually also don't really have all the answers. You know, I'm a 17 yeah. year old, I'm just learning about hair. And I really wanted to put that forward that, you know, while you might be also curious to ask people, what braids can yeah. I get? What hairstyle can I get? Not everybody has the answer also. Yeah. They're just trying to experiment with their hairstyle so it also addresses that as well but um Abby Demi also in the book she kind of suggests hairstyle that are more suited to the hair textures of her friend and we see that through the book she's not closed off to yeah. sharing what she loves about hair um but she's also kind of like inform informative but also learning with her friends yeah okay typical um, teenage girl yeah <laughs> Well, this is a new strand for you. So you're now author, as Elaine said, yeah. at the very top. We also know you because we see you on our TV. <laughs> so, so where did the interest in TV come from and how did that career begin? Um, it was kind of like... It was a bit of a strange entry because um, when I went in to study journalism, I only ever thought about print. Um, I just didn't think... I didn't think beyond that, um, and I've always loved writing, clearly. I've always loved writing, so I was thinking about print, and I had applied for the Children's News Programme News Today uh, two years before um, I actually was finished college. Chance in my arm, which I tend to do. <laughs> I chance in my arm. Not in ventures. Yeah, and then luckily enough, by the time I was interning in the Irish Independent, um, 
they had opened up auditions again. So I went and did my audition. Again, wasn't thinking too much about it because everyone around me was far more experienced, a little bit older, just had the look is, is what yeah. I would have put it. You know what I mean? And I remember I went in with my pennies jeans and my like top that I had thrifted and things like that. Wasn't thinking too much about the whole thing. Um, and by the end of that summer, I had come back from holiday. I got a call to come in um, and they said, yeah, you got the job. And I remember the first thing I said is, are you having me on? Like thinking that maybe it was for a runner's position or maybe like there's a print position. Cause again, no TV experience whatsoever. Um, and I remember the first thing uh, my manager then said to me was like, you are naturally yourself. Um, I think that's kind of how I've led my television career. I've just been myself throughout and I've been enjoying it so far. And how long have you been on uh, Nationwide now? I've been on Nationwide five years. Five and, years. Yeah. Probably the first a black woman um, to be front and centre on a major show like that. I mean, you, you paved the way really for so many other people. <laughs> Um, it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, when I think about it, because I'm only young myself, yeah. and when I tell people that I've had, like, almost a 10-year career in, like, media in general, yeah. for me, it's like, that's a lot of time, because, <laughs> yeah. again, I'm tw turning 28 this month, um, so for me, I feel super young in the industry, and I think, um, but I, I hear that other people feel like, I've known you since you were on, you know, yeah. you stay back seven years ago, or I've known you since we were writing 10 years ago. And for me, it feels overwhelming, but also I understand the importance of representation and I'm glad that I can be that for so many people. But also I just want to write, remind people that I'm also young and I'm still learning myself. And there's loads more in the tank, yes. really. There's yeah. lots more to come as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've also got a short film to brag about too. Worthy. Yes, yeah, so, I would call myself just a storyteller overall. Um, so I'd like to kind of pursue different things that allows me to tell stories in different ways. And that's where the short film kind of came in because I've always been curious about writing for television, writing for screen in a non-journalistic way. Mm. Um, so the first thing I did was during COVID, I took a script writing course, um, an online digital course, because there was a lot of time on the hand. Um, so I did that and I learned how to format a script. So then I applied the story I wanted to tell to that script and I was really um, ambitious at first I was like oh I'm gonna make this major film it's gonna be amazing <laughs> and I realized films cost money so Worthy was made <laughs> I mean obviously Worthy was made on a shoestring budget with um, a couple of my friends who are in the creative industry and we all wanted to learn together and put the story together in a way that felt representative to the black queer community in Ireland um, so I did the script writing and the directing and some of my other friends did wardrobe my friends who were actors came in on it so we really all learned and grew together and the story of Worthy is about a young woman who's questioning her worth after her breakup. Oh my God, so anything else in the pipeline now because you've, you've ticked <laughs> most of the boxes in media that I can see. I'm, I'm still learning but I think right now I feel comfortable in the space of writing stories um, which essentially like writing a book. Um, so I'm just in the space of wanting to develop some other ideas as well. So that's where I'm at. Well, I'm sure you'll absolutely smash it. A Thank delight, so as always, to Thank have you, you on the <laughs> show today. And a reminder, of course, that Zainab's book, Braids Take a Day, is now available online and in all good bookshops nationwide.